the seal is opened. It is not just open by chance. Somebody went through a rigorous process to open the seal. And the seal stays open. The book of Revelation 5, I will read verse 1 through 4. Revelation 5, verse 1 to 4, the Bible is saying, <clears throat> Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven, no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. When you look at what John is telling us, he is saying that when he had a vision, there was one sitting on the throne, seemingly the one sitting on the throne must be powerful, but the one on the throne is perplexed, is worried, because no one is able to open that scroll that is in his hand. And if a powerful person is not seeing a solution, who else could see? And the seal is sealed with, the scroll is sealed with seven seals. When you look at the number seven, obviously you understand that it is perfectly sealed. Seven is the number for perfection. So it is telling us that this seal, the one who sealed it, knew that no one would be able to unseal it. And that is why a strong angel is crying. Not just an angel. The Bible wants to help us understand the situation in heaven. By telling us that an angel who is not just an angel, a strong one, is proclaiming with a loud voice, who is able to open the scroll and unseal its seven seals? And no one is found worthy to open the scroll. That is why John is saying, I cried much. I wept and wept because no one was worthy to open the seal. So it makes me wonder why it is so tough. It seems impossible to open this seal. And then I realize that when God created Adam and Eve, he told them that there is danger. There has been a rebellion in heaven. Third of angels came down with their leader called Lucifer. 
And they will try to tempt you. And angels are ready to protect you from sinning. I will give you power. But only that for him not to complain, there must be just one option that he may be, enter, he may be able to enter into, into yourselves. Only through the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Thou shalt not eat it. The day you eat it, thou shalt surely die. And they were serious with it. But one day Eve is just walking, walking around herself and meets this devil on a tree. And the devil is tempting her and telling her, no, the day you eat it, you will be like God. You will be exalted. And again he sees that the fruit is sweet and the snake is eating and is not dying. And the, tree, the fruit decided to become very desirable. And she picks it and eats. Immediately she ate the fruit she felt like she was entering a higher status of existence. Do you know, the time you are sinning, you are feeling you are entering a higher status. Those people who are sinning seems to be people who are backward. People who are useless. And you feel that sinning is, is nice. And it is a good experience. And they felt that the experience was nice. And when they looked around, there was no sign that God is displeased with their sinning. It is no more in your daily lives when you sin, you always see that there is no sign that your God is displeased with the sin. By the way, you might even boast that you are sinning. When they had all sinned, they immediately realized that they are naked and they go and hide. When they hear God is walking and coming closer to them, they went and hid themselves. Then God is asking, where are you? We realize that we are naked, so we have hidden ourselves. Then God is asking, how did you know that you are naked? Or did you eat of the fruit that I told you not to eat? Then they start blame games. I'm not going to those ones. But when they sinned, there was sadness in heaven. There was sadness in heaven. Angels knew that man is lost. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit knew that now man is lost because they will surely die. And because of that, angels seeing that this beautiful man that was created is going to get lost, they started thinking that we can go and save them. We can go and die for them. They lied prostrate before God, asking that they can come to save the lost. But only the life of one who is equal to God could be able to save them. In their sin, when they ate the fruit, the devil knew that 
Their destiny is sealed. They must die. No one will save them from sin. That is when the devil now knows that even God himself has been put into a corner. That no one can keep your commandments. They are impossible. You are a tyrant. And because of this, angels felt pain. There was a lot of sadness in heaven. A lot of weeping. And you can understand this from the text in verse 2 and 3. When the prophet of God is saying, that I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or see inside it. No one could be able to open it. And heaven is weeping because man is forever lost. A solution must be found out. Angels are offering themselves, lying prostrate before the Father, that can we go and die for man? But their lives could not be able to save you. That is why there is a lot of weeping, no one. But the Son of God, God the Son, who was with the Father in the beginning when they started creating, says that I will leave all my glory. I will come I will go down as man. I will die. And I will pay the price for man. Then he tells angels that do you know when I take the nature of man, I will be weaker than you. I will be needing your support. You will be protecting me. You will be walking with me all through. The angels are feeling, they are very sad. Feeling that their commander cannot turn into a human being. But Jesus says, I must go. Then after Jesus says, I must go and open a way for man. Verse 4 says, I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and look inside it. Then one of the elders said to me, verse 5, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and open its seven seals. This one of the elders is telling John, now, please don't weep because of your sins. Children of men, do not weep because of your sin. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He has triumphed. He is now worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. What this text is telling me, that Christ who was God, decided to leave his glory in heaven, 
decided to come in your position that he can shed his blood for you and for me, that a way out can be found where there was no way. Where sin, Satan had caged us, knowing that no one can deliver us out of death. Christ decided to be the price to be paid for our sins. And now because he died for my sake, he is worthy to open the scroll. Let me remind you of a certain verse we have read. Uh, in verse 2 that says that a strong angel cried with a loud voice. And the man that was holding the scroll was on the throne. This means that there were powerful people who could be able to struggle with something that needs power. If it needed strength, they could have battled it out and overcame. But it, this one makes me understand that this one doesn't need strength. It do doesn't need power. It needs moral uprightness. It needs victory. And Jesus was a victor. Was not a victor because of his strength. But he was a victor because he decided to pay the price for justice. So he paid that price. Now because of the payment of the price, Jesus becomes worthy to open the future of man. God could not open it just because he is God. There must have been some kind of battle and then you become a victor for you to open it. This one also makes me now understand that if you want to succeed in your Christian life, it is not strength, but you must be a victor. There is a kind of moral excellence that God wants you to achieve. Jesus has provided a way, but there is an expectation of a moral ex excellence that all of us, we may triumph with the one who opened for us the seal. And now, what, when I read verse 5, that the one of the elders said to me, <coughs> said to me, do not weep. See the lion of tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. The description of Jesus here makes me love this verse. That the tribe of Judah is a kingly tribe. There will be no failure to the tribe of Judah. This man from the tribe of Judah must succeed in battle. And another description is that this man is the root of David. I love King David. A king who always depended on the Lord to tell him whether to go to war or not. Every time David went for war, he had to succeed. You can remember easily how he succeeded easily to kill the giant. And in his time, they killed several giants. But the one that I love so much is that when he was going to kill this giant, people are seeing somebody who is probably under 20, 
coming to fight a man of war since his youth. Then he's being told, no, you cannot find, fight this man. This one is a man of war since his youth. But, but he says, you know, your servant used to keep the sheep. And in the field, a bear would come to take a lion from me, to take a lamb from me. But I would just take it by the mouth and tear it and kill it. And another time, a lion would come to take a lamb from me. But I would not allow it. I would take the lion by my hand and tear it and kill it and save the lamb. Because of that kind of faith that even a lion cannot be able to overcome me, David was always a victor. So David achieved much, overcame several battles when he was just a very young man. I don't know any one of you who could dare to fight a lion. If you have ever seen, you, could, you might not have gone to the, to, the, to, the, to the parks, but I'm sure you have seen Nat Geo. But uh, how I wish you, have, you, 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 would have, you could have seen a, a live one near you and see how the legs are stout. And you tell me if you can dare take a lion by your bare hands. But he's saying, the God of Israel will help me succeed with this giant. It is God who helped me Overcome the bear. It is the Lord who helped me kill the lion. Even this one will be eaten by the birds today. So, because David never believed in a failure in war, then the description here is that the lion from the tribe of Judah The root of Jesse has triumphed. This one tells me that when you are weeping because you know you are caged because of your sins, this verse is telling you Weep no more. I know because of your sins, you, you know you have no future in God. But this verse is telling you, weep no more. The lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed. The root of Jesse has triumphed. Some of you here are sinners. Or all of us here are sinners. Maybe at different, in different degrees. But the fact is that all of us are sinners. Please do not think that there is, a way, there is no way out. Do not think that the seal cannot be opened. The lion of the tribe of Judah has, is worthy to open the seal so that you may be free. He is worthy to open the scroll and all its seven seals. Meaning that if the seal was sealed by seven seals, him also, he is worthy Sorry, he also is worthy to open the scroll and all, how many? It's seven seals. Perfect salvation. That is why we must praise this one, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to open the scroll and all its seven seals. 
Uh, go with me to Psalm 24. <coughs> My voice is struggling, but uh, no problem. <coughs> We will come back to Revelation. Psalm 24. <clears throat> we will do from verse 7. Okay. Let me say a sentence before we read it. That Revelation chapter 5 can tell you about enjoyment that is going on in heaven when Christ has just risen and after 40 days this man is being taken from the, from the apostles and is going up, going up and the apostles are asking, they are gazing up, and then an angel comes and tells them, Men of Galilee, why are you gazing up like this? And then the angel says, This same Jesus, whom you have seen go, will come back. And when Jesus goes to heaven, he is escorted by angels to heaven. Because he has achieved a victory. He has achieved. Then, as they have achieved... As you read that, as we go to read this verse, Psalm 24 from verse 7, you can see that heaven was waiting to welcome the Savior to the celestial courts. As he ascended, he led away the multitude of captives. Then the heavenly host with shouts and acclamations of, of praise and celestial song, attended the joyous train. And they, as they drew near to the city of God, the challenge is given by the escorting angels. There are angels who are escorting him, and they give a challenge, and the challenge is 24 verse 7, which says, Lift up your hearts, O ye gates. Sorry, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Joyfully the waiting sentinels respond. Who is the King of glory? Do you know there are sentinels waiting for Jesus to arrive in heaven? And they are asking. Angels who are coming, you are saying we open up the doors. We raise up our heads for the king of glory to come in. Who is this king of glory? They are not asking because they don't know the king of glory. But they are asking so that the exaltation of Jesus, as he has achieved the victory, could be joyous, glorious, because the answer would be, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. He has saved man. So this man is strong. He is mighty. The Lord is mighty in battle. So they praise Jesus as they go in, and then it continues, who Verse, verse, verse 9, lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Then again they ask, who is this king of glory? Not that they have not heard, but they want the joyous occasion to be repeated. Then the solution in verse 10 says, the Lord Almighty, he is the king of glory. Jesus Christ went through pain to open the seal 
that was put there by Satan. No one in heaven, no one on earth, no one beneath the earth could be able to open the scroll and its seven seals. But only this man, Jesus Christ, is worthy because he was willing to go through pain with us. And now all heaven is rejoicing that this man, this Jesus, has gone through this tough experience and is now worthy to, press, to, to, to save man. If you would want to get more, you can go to the book, The Salvages, the last page, the last, the last chapter. You can get all this, especially in, chapter, in, in page 833. We come back to Revelation 5. Revelation 5, verse 5 was telling us, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Because Jesus wants to save you and save you to the uttermost. Jesus is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Jesus is worthy. He is able to save you to the uttermost. I know you have deep sins. He was able to be hung on the cross. And he took all the shame of sin. Do you know guilt? When you are taking, you are guilty that you have done something wrong. Say, your Savior Jesus Christ also was very guilty when he was hanging on the cross. That he has committed all the sins that you always commit in the dark. Do you know shame of sin? Have you ever committed a sin that you feel ashamed if somebody could know it? That is the shame that he took on the cross. When he's being nailed on the cross as a thief and he has stolen nothing. When he has been nailed on the cross as an adulterer but has done nothing. That is why this man is worthy to open the scroll. And he will open it to the uttermost. And because of that, when you go to verse, chapter 5, verse 9, as they were entering into the city, it was a joyous occasion. Jesus entered into the heavens and he reached to the Father and the voice of God was heard proclaiming that justice is satisfied, Satan is vanquished, Christ, Christ toiling, struggling ones on earth are accepted in the beloved then the father's arms encircled his son and the word is given, let all the angels of God worship him. Jesus embraces his son, encycles him, with, embraces him with the hands, then he pronounces let all my angels, if you know you are my angel, worship Jesus Christ. He is worthy. He has opened the scroll. And then a joyous occasion was in heaven. And in this joyous occasion, the angels' host prostrate themselves before him while 
the glad shout fills the courts of heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That is verse 12. In a loud voice, they sang because God had told them, praise Jesus Christ so that in all heaven there was an echo of praise and they said in verse 12, in a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamp who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Look at what they are singing in verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and every language and people and nation. So the Bible is telling us that because of that shame that our Savior met at the cross, this man Jesus is worthy because he shed his blood for us. So he is worthy to receive praise. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. We need to praise this man. This man, Jesus, has made us to have a way to everlasting life. The seal that Satan had put and he knew that because of my sins I am eternally lost. My Savior Jesus decided to give me a way out. The seven seals he has broken. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Lastly, I would say that the second last paragraph, second last paragraph in the old book of the of Ages is saying, songs of triumph mingle with the music from angels harps, fill till heaven seems to overflow with joy and praise. Love has conquered. The lost is found. Have you understood that? Love has conquered. The lost is found. Do you know if it is not because of love of heaven to you, you would be lost? So when Satan was trying to fix us, God delivered us because of his love. So love has conquered. The lost is found. Jesus is worthy to receive honor and glory and blessing because he brought to us love. Love has conquered. This is why I invite you, I invite you, that you may come to Jesus Christ this day. There is a sinner here who knows that there is sin that is fixing me down. I am telling you today that the seal has been unbroken. The scroll is open and it stays open. Your salvation stays open. Decide to glorify this man. 
Let us all sing praises and honor to his name. Because he opened the way that we never believed we can never get. Who is this one? Who is saying? That I know that Satan thought he sealed my destiny. But my destiny from today I know it stays open. Can you rise up? I know my destiny. It stays open. It remains open. Because of my Savior Jesus Christ. I will no longer fear that I am a sinner. I will boldly come to the cross of Christ because of his blood that he shed on Calvary. May God bless you as we sing our last song.